according to a research, shoppers learn a path of their store. आप में से बहुत लोग इम्तियाज जाते होंगे बहुत लोग हाइपर स्टार जाते होंगे आपको पता है दाल कहाँ रखी हुई है आटा कहाँ रखा हुआ है गोश्त कहाँ मिलता है सो दे लर्न दिस मैप ऑफ द स्टोर एंड एवरी टाइम दे गो टू द स्टोर देर इज दिस ऑटो पायलट मोड विच इज ऑन ऑटो पायलट क्या होता है जहाज चल रहा है पता नहीं जो जो लोग यहाँ पर ड्राइव करते हैं वो गेयर चेंज करते हैं बट दे डोंट डू इट कॉन्शियसली इनको पता होता है सेकेंड गेयर थर्ड गेयर दैट्स हाउ यू शॉप इन साइड द स्टोर राइट सो फॉर मार्केटर्स it's extremely important that we break this autopilot mode right so they can explore more they can have the impulse can be triggered right but the big question is that how do you break this autopilot mode so you can break this autopilot mode by being planned more planned relevant to the shopper and by the way i'll be using the word shopper again and again instead of consumer because my area of interest is shopper marketing uh, so don't get confused yeah so by being planned engaged and more relevant to the shopper but ye hoga kaise these are just words right so if you're being more planned you being more relevant to the shopper and you, if you can create the right engagement you create what you create an insight right the right consumer inside and shopper inside jiske upar sari aapki marketing strategy based hoti hai so finding the right insight is the key but before we get into how to find the right insight let's just see what an what an insight is right these are some of the definitions jo maine google se copy ki hain so new patterns beyond the obvious to see clearly and intuitively and it's a it's an unexpected shift to a better story all of these definitions are correct right but i have my personal favorite definition so an insight is something which you can't google right because everything can be googled but an insight is something which you can't google right because we are so dependent upon this technology we are always Fine. We we have all the answers now, right? एक जमाना था जब people used to confuse knowledge with wisdom. कि इस बंदे को सारी dates याद हैं. कितना ज़हीम आदमी है. That's not the case anymore. आपको dates याद हैं मेरे phone में सारी dates हैं. सही है so makes no sense. आप आपको याद हैं good for you, but it doesn't make any sense. So now wisdom क्या है? Wisdom is the application of that knowledge. So even the definition of wisdom has changed. So so my personal definition of an insight is something which you can't Google. but now there is a problem right if there is something which you can't google then how will you find it right and since we are so dependent upon technology so if you want to understand how a lion hunts don't go to zoo go where go to the jungle right and if you want to understand how a shopper shops don't go don't sit in your classrooms don't sit in your office bedrooms go to the retail store because retail is the new jungle aur clark sahab hamesha bolte the market is the best teacher so ye mujhe aaj tak yaad hai and and he so right market is jo cheeze aapko market sikha sakti hai i don't think there is anything in this world any teacher in this world that can teach you that so market is the best teacher but again there is a problem right problem by problem so retail is the jungle you go to the market you start observing people you start asking questions why did you buy this product what's happening here what are your motivations but the problem with that is there are two problems actually the first is they don't know right so people don't know the motivations behind their purchase decisions because it's such a such a low involvement sabun kharidte hue koi sochta hai mere kya motivation hai agar mujhse puch le dal kyu khareedi ye wali i won't be able to tell them maine ye wali dal kyu khareedi shayad zyada pee li thi i don't know right so a they don't know b they lie people always lie you know it's in our dna you know because i have been part of a lot of focus groups and researches a there is group think b people always try to portray their ideal self aap kisi puchoge aap namaz padhte hain well alhamdulillah panchon waqt ki namaz padhte hain aap bachcho ko marte kabhi bhi nahi mara bachcho ko aisa nahi hai ki koi paise mil rahe unko झूठ बोलने के या सच बोलने के बट पीपल ऑलवेज ट्राई टू पोर्ट्रेज एर आइडियल सेल्फ राइट 
अगर उनको कि, किसी तरीके से भी पता चल जाए कि अच्छा ये यूनिलीवर uh, की रिसर्च है सही है दे विल ट्राई टू प्लीज यू हम तो सिर्फ कनौर ही हमारे घर में तो सिर्फ कनौर आता है नहीं और रफान ही यूज करते हैं हम तो सो दे हैव दिस हैबिट ऑफ लाइंग राइट सो इफ दे डोंट नो and they're lying about it then how do you find the right consumer inside or the shopper inside yeah that's the big question and that's why neuromarketing comes in where you stop asking questions and start observing right so you can do this like you can do this manually you know you go to a store and you you may look a little creepy you just stand there in the corner and start observing people you can get a hold of the cctv camera start observing people and make trend out of it that's completely possible uh but obviously there is this human error involved in that and your personal biases right so neuro marketing is a is there to help you yeah nothing to worry so what is neuro marketing now so as i mentioned earlier these are the same tools which uh neuro scientist or uh, uh, neuro scientists use for medical purpose and neuromarketers have just converted slightly those the same tools just to understand the impact of advertising on human emotions okay so i'm going to go one by one and if you have any questions even in the middle you know just just throw at me so the first tool and by the way uh there are a million tools available globally of neuromarketing these are just the tools which i use okay so the first is eye tracking eye tracking is a simple simple glasses you know just like the one you're wearing right now and it actually tracks the shopper behavior or the consumer behavior so where exactly a consumer or a shopper is looking at so for example i have invested so much in 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 a retail store but the question as a marketer i want to ask is is anybody even looking at it or not and if they are looking at it is anybody reading it or not and if they're reading it is the is it making any Which is it converting into sales or not? Because sales is my bottom line, right? I just don't want them to read. I just I want them to buy. Okay. So the first is eye tracking. I'll show you a demo as well. The second second is how you track the facial expression. So you have 63 muscles in your face, uh, and every muscle tells a story. Right? Every muscle tells an emotion. Okay. Whether I'm smiling, my the my chin raise, my eyebrows, everything. you know tells in tells in uh, explains a human emotion you know so eye tracking uh, facial coding the third is galvanic skin response so i'm sure you must have seen uh, this lie detector in movies right anybody lie detector i hope i'm not going too technical right yes so usually movies mein dikhate hain criminals ko bata rahe hain ki wo sach bol rahe hain ki jhoot bol rahe hain so so it's it's a similar device it's galvanic skin response so you always have sweat glands in your hand har waqt or some amount of secretion is all always there of sweat say now this secretion variates when you're happy when you're sad you know so the level of secretion fluctuates and that's how you calculate if the consumer or the shopper is excited about your product or not right then uh last and the most important second last actually electroencephalogram is the eeg headset i'm sure you must have seen it in movies uh it's a it's a it's a simple headset like this you just wear it on your head so right now whatever i'm whatever my body language is if i'm moving this hand right now so actually it's my brain sending a signal to my hand right so that's called a neurotransmitter so this device particularly calculates the rate at which my neurons are transferring or transporting to my body parts right and and i'm moving and i'm functioning okay so ye device kya karta hai jis tarah gaadi ka rpm hota hai isi tarike se neurotransmitters ka rpm hota hai so this device tells me whether uh, so, so uh, when you're happy when you're excited when you're motivated you know so the level of neurotransmitters increases and when you're sad when you're upset and when you're confused when you're angry you know so there is a dip okay now the most important part neuromarketing ki baat karke main ye kisi bhi angle se ye nahi bol raha ki conventional research is redundant i think it's extremely important the value of qualitative and quantitative research is still very important why why am i why am i saying this because neuromarketing will only explain the unconscious behavior 
right so my neuro marketing tools tell me tells me ke shoppers are very excited to see the new packaging of lux okay so, but mai observe kar raha hu ke wo capri utha rahe so ye kya ho raha hai so baad mein baat karke pata chala usne capri isliye uthaya hai kyunki uski maa bhi capri use karti thi right so this kind of information you can only get through a qualitative interview right when you interview the person so you can only understand the impact of advertising on an unconscious behavior through all these tools jo shuru mein hai all the four tools this will only tell you the unconscious human behavior or what motivated them but it cannot explain the, them right so for that you need qualitative researches so what we do we combine the qualitative and the quantitative part and then we merge them together right the unconscious and the conscious shopper behavior or consumer behavior this is just an example of how eye tracking is used globally in market research we saw a very big mountain to to climb on what does my product look like on shelf or what does my product look like in 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 physical so using eye tracking it gives you the opportunity to look through the consumer's eyes so instead of just only listening to an opinion of a consumer we now see the analysis with heat maps and gaze spot analysis instead of working only with a powerpoint deck and showing that to an audience our experience working with eye tracking is uh, the speed and we work very close to deadlines and when we need that specific answer on a question we use a lot of eye tracking because eyes don't lie combine these things can gives you the right insights to adjust your pack or convince your customer eye tracking is part of our dna so i don't i i don't lie i love this part because eyes eyes don't lie people lie because but eyes don't lie right so so now coming to the most critical part right so technology aaj ye hai kal koi aur hogi technology is not important important is you understand the methodology right and you understand the need of doing all this so there is abundant of research already available jo ke neuroscientists ne neurosurgeons ne neuromarketers ne pichle 30 saalon mein already ki hui hai right so i'm just going to give you some trade secrets right here so according to neuroscientists there are three layers of your brain okay so the first layer is the reptilian brain or the instinctual brain right where so jab mankind jab start hua pura silsila start hua so it was just the instinctual brain because no emotions were involved no rationality was needed right jo cheez achhi lagi kha li जिसको जो बुरा लगा उसको मार दिया जिस जो अच्छा लगा उसके साथ चले गए उसके बाद मैन काइंड स्टार्टेड टू सेटलिंग इन रिलेशनशिप्स आए फैमिलीज बनी दोस्त बने सही है एंड अनदर लेयर ऑफ योर ब्रेन डेवलप्ड विच इज योर मिडिल ब्रेन योर मिडिल ब्रेन इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर ऑल योर इमोशनल एक्टिविटीज राइट जब फैमिलीज बढ़ी जब दोस्त बने जब रिश्तेदारियां बढ़ी फिर क्या हुआ देर वॉज अ नीड ऑफ अ सिटी अ कंट्री राइट बिल्डिंग्स बनी सही है सो आपका रैशनल ब्रेन सही है जो कि आपका सबसे रीसेंट ब्रेन है योर न्यू कॉटेक्स द न्यू ब्रेन दैट डेवलप्ड ओके सो जैसे बच्चा पैदा होता है सो वेन ही इज इन्फेंट ही जस्ट गोज ही शी जस्ट गोज विद हिज और हर इंस्टिंग्स राइट देन ही शी गेट्स इमोशनल and then he gets more rational okay so that's how the human brain evolved right and to tell you the first two brains are 500 million years old and the recent brain is 5 million years old mai date kyun bata raha hu I'll, i'll explain so all the neuromarketers believe that all the buying decision that we make is actually through your reptilian brain so there is no such thing as a rational decision you only make emotional decisions and then you rationalize them right so if you think about it it's actually true because can anybody think of a very rational decision buying a house maybe buying a property you know so all the rational decisions 
deep down are rooted to all the Maslow hierarchy, you know, basic need, self-esteem need, you know, so no matter how calculated your decision is, they're actually deep down rooted to the Maslow hierarchy and the emotional activities involved. So, again, it's, a, it's an old exercise, but uh, it would be great if we can have it. So I'm just gonna show you some colors, if you can all loudly read it. Okay, so it's red, yellow. Okay, enough, enough, we, we got it, okay. So what's happening here is that I just created a conflict between your new brain and your reptilian brain because reptilian brain ko ye nahi pata ke ye red ki spelling r e d hai reptilian brain bol raha hai ki ye lal color hai sahi hai neocortex bol raha hai nahi iski spelling hai r e d wo padhna hai sahi is there you go you created a conflict between your new brain and the reptilian brain again which one is the biggest line they all are the same again there is a conflict between your neocortex and the reptilian brain so why am i telling you all this because there is a good news the good news is that A, now we know that all the buying decisions, all the consumer decisions are deep-rooted emotional decisions and your reptilian brain is responsible for that. B, we know the stimuli which can trigger the reptilian brain. You know, so in your marketing strategy, in your communication strategy, if you apply these six stimuli, chances are that you can actually trigger your consumers or your shoppers reptilian brain. Okay, so I'm gonna go one by one and talk about what are these stimuli. So the first is self-centered. You know, we human beings are self-centered. And, you know, the, I think history proves this, right? selfless, there is always some hidden agenda or, you know, we are selfish people, you know? So since uh, shopper marketing is my area, I'm gonna give you an example of shopper marketing. So dirt is good, dark to achhe hote is an amazing advertising campaign, at least I, I feel so, you know. But is this a good shopper message? Because jab koi surf excel kharid raha hai, aur usko koi bata hai, daak to achhe hote hai, wale mein kya karu? Mujhe to batao ye kitne ka hai, mujhe batao ye kapde saaf kare ka nahi karega, you know. So your reptilian brain is actually very self-centered, you know. So while designing marketing communication, you need to understand, you need to feed the selfishness of your shopper as well, right? So, daak to achhe hote hain, dirt is good, is a very good marketing campaign, it's a very good brand slogan. But for a shopper's perspective, he or she needs to know that my powder will remove stain in just one minute. That's a more functional approach, right? So, now that's where your brand message is different from your shopper message. Hum log kya dekh rahe hote hain, ke jo TV pe tagline chal rahi hote hain, wohi store pe bhi chal rahi hote hain. But, because the zone in which the shopper is buying is very different from the zone while he or she is watching TV, right? So similarly, your communication should be different. Second is, we love contrast. Yeah, we always look at them, right? And A, if you see this person, yeah, he's a nice, he's a good looking man, but I say, wow, but when I see the, him in the con in contrast, I see. Wow. Okay, he's lost some weight. Again, his hairline is, is not very impressive, but when I see his old picture, it makes more sense. Yeah, now he's looking good. You know. So what are we trying to sell? If you're selling, if if there is a consumer promotion, and you're unable to justify to the shopper that how a, a consumer promotion or a bundle pack is better than buying a single pack, right? Only then it makes sense. Otherwise, a bundle pack without contrast is just it's just extra buying makes no sense right three the reptilian brain understands tangible things only usko nahi pata amino acid kya hai biotin kya hai probiotics bacche ke liye kya hai say we don't talk in this language right when we don't talk in this language why do we talk to our consumers in, in this language right so Parveen Chakar se kisi ne poocha ke aapne English mein MA kiya hai aur aap Urdu mein likhti hai to aap aisa kyun karti hai? Unhone bola, mein us zaman mein likhti hai, us zaman mein wo khwab dekhti hai. Right? So, 
why can't we talk to our consumers in a language in which they dream, right? In a language in which they talk to their fr friends. Why do we have to so technical about it, right? So there is an example of how Mr. Clean converted something, an intangible benefit into tangible so that your reptilian brain can understand it. In psychology, there is a concept of recency precency, right? So, it's like a few times that we watch a very good movie and it's like, what a movie is it? And it's like the end is like that the whole movie is bad, right? So, yeah, we both say the first impression is the last impression. You know, so according to uh, neuromarketers, the first impression and the last impression is the most important. What, ha what happens in the middle, it's not that important. So, from a shopper's marketeer, marketeer, when a shopper is entering inside the store, he or she is in, in an exploratory mode, right? He wants to buy stuff. That's what's making him enter inside the store. But when, when he or she is inside the store, the, the decisions are easy, right? So if you want to intercept the shopper, so entrance is the area. And if you want to intercept the shopper, exit is the area. Because those time people thought that something was wrong, right? That is why you will always see all these impulse categories like chocolates, like chewing gums, cigarettes on the counter, right? And I think the most important is the power of visual communication. Can you count the windows in your room right now? So, what happened is. For just micro mini seconds, you have actually reached your room. You have reached one window here, one window here. That's how we are programmed. That's how we are wired, right? So the power of visual communication is much higher than verbal communication or any other communication. Why? There is an there is a evolutional evolutionary theory behind it, right? Because your reptilian brain is 500 million years old, right? And at that time, there were no words. And your new, uh, new cortex is just 20 to 40,000 years old. You know, that's where, the, and, and humne pehle baat ki ki all your buying decisions are actually deep-rooted from a reptilian brain, OK? This is an example of eye tracking, how eye tracking works inside a store. So this red circle that you see, this is actually the movement of the eyeball. Yes, sir. So, and it's so fast. It looks like the shopper or the consumer is on a roller skate, right? It's so fast. It's just moving. That's how you, that's how you visually browse things inside the store. And for marketeers, you know, there's, there's a term marketing myopia, you know. And sometimes, you know, we feel that marketeers are living in a bubble. They feel if the, if the point of sale material is there, people will be reading it. No, nobody's reading it, right? This is an example of how we interpret eye tracking results. So all the red areas that you see, this is the interpre interpretation of an eye tracking study. So all the red areas are actually the concentration of eyeballs. And this could be an accumulated result of, let's say, 50 shoppers or 100 shoppers. So what's happening here is, is this is just an example to give you an idea how neuromarketing works or eye tracking works. So according to research, we visually browse an aisle or a category in a diamond shape. Okay? So for example, if this is this is an aisle right in front of me, you know, so my first natural instinct would be to look at the eye level, right? Eye level, above, below, right, left. Yes, right? So when you have such studies, right? So you you understand how to prioritize your products inside the inside the shelf. Okay. Again, there's a there's a term for it, and it's a it's a it's a human. आपने देखा होगा बच्चे toys पढ़े हुए होंगे और नहीं खेल रहे होंगे उनसे. पर जैसे ही कोई दूसरा बच्चा उसको खेलने की कोशिश करेगा, बोलेगा नहीं, मुझे खेलना है. Right? That's a human behavior. So we can see, we can, we can show a Coke lying inside a store. It's good. We can show that somebody is holding it. It's even better. 
but it's best when somebody else is consuming it, right? Because then we want to have it too, like that baby, okay? So the research proof that this is the visual hierarchy any, any marketeer needs to follow in order to register to the reptilian brain, okay? So it's colors first, the brand colors, then shapes, numbers, and in the end it's text. Nobody likes to read inside a retail store. Nobody, and especially millennials, their readability, their, it's decreasing day by day, and we have Gen Z coming up. I don't know what will happen. You know, the attention span is decreasing, you know. There is so much information on Facebook, and we're just scrolling. We're not stopping anywhere, right? This generation is called the swipe generation, by the way. You know, we're always swiping. So, you know, but what is in the real world, we're actually, st we start with the word. Because brand manager says, no, my functional benefit to not come. My tagline to not come. My logo, my pack shot. Oh, these are all the things you have written. Right? So, that's a wish list. Hai. Right? They need to understand that they can wish whatever they want to, but nobody's reading it, right? Again, this is an example of an eye tracking study. So, I tell you this so that you understand how can we use these studies, right? So, in an e-commerce website or on any website actually, when a shopper is browsing, visually browsing a website, he or she creates a visual F, you know, you see? Because you start with the, with the first uh, search result, you, you check that, then you read it, then you go down, second, then as he or she is going down, your interest is going to fall down. How many times have we gone to Google on the second page or the third page? We go to research for the research. What are we doing? But normally, you know, we don't do the second page or the third page. You know? So, normally, we don't use the second page or the third page. So, again, so from an e-commerce point of view or from a website development point of view, if I have this information, I know that this is where I need to keep my core information because nobody is actually scrolling down, okay? Okay, I love this one. This one is, I, I think this one is the most interesting. So, right now, what's happening is, again, this red dot is the concentration of eyeballs. So, what's happening here is that when the marketeers showed this picture to a sample, you know, we all are looking to the baby. And that's, that's human nature, you know, nobody's reading it, you know, because A, we love babies, B, reading is boring, yeah. So, everybody's looking at the baby. But just by doing something very minor, you can change that. Because as a marketeer, my aim is not to make the baby famous, but my aim is for people to read my message, right? So just by changing the direction of that baby, you know, people actually started reading it. So if I'm standing right here, you all will look at me. But if I point my fingers right there, what is happening here? We are So, you know, again, another example, you know. What's happening here is that just by moving the eyeball of this lady to the product, the visual attention is equally divided on the product and on the lady, right? But what are we doing in our campaigns? That here is a model like this, that here is a product. Hai. Okay, makes no sense. Okay. Fawad Khan is there in the campaign only because he's Fawad Khan. Does, he doesn't have to do anything with the product, right? So, I, I think it's again a very good area of research as well, you know, that are we taking these celebrities just because they're famous? Or do they really have any connection with the brand, right? So I, I think this question we all marketers need to ask ourselves, that if you can actually identify a product without its label, I think that's a big success, right? And, and, and I'm just gonna share the biggest success ever. I think everybody in this room can recognize this bottle 
just by its silhouette, right? Now that's the kind of visual relationship you want to create with your shoppers and uh, consumers. We have time, right? Okay, great. Yep. Ma'am, who will you stop? Who will you stop? You were saying like you Yes, yes, yes. So inside the inside the store, we actually make them wear these glasses. Sometimes we give them a discount voucher, incentivize them, or sometimes we, we just go to them and you know we are doing this research and you know it would be great if you can continue your shopping and you know just wear these glasses. You know, it's it's not an easy job, by the way. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just not the recording machine. That's easily available everywhere, a camera in a, in a glasses. But what's more important is that it actually calculates the fluctuations in your eyeball, you know, and that makes all the business ready for the marketers, you know. So for example, I will know that this is the very first thing a shopper looked at. This was the second thing a shopper looked at. If I if there is if there is a gondola inside a store, I will be able to find out. How, what was the average dwell time a shopper looked at at this particular thing, right? So all these calculations, so that the software helps us with. And that's for the glasses and rest of the other yeah. So, so all the tools which I just uh, talked about, so every tool has a different um, way of interpreting results. But what we do, we combine all the tools and try to make sense out of the whole data. EEG, like EEG. So again, you make them yes, like yes, that. yes. And that's not just inside the store. Sometimes we just uh, evaluate TV ads. Sometimes we evaluate print ads, a radio ad, maybe jingle. You know, so it's applicable. Anything that is visual, anything that can be seen, that can be um, a jingle, maybe that can be tested through neuromarketing. Okay, moving on. And last is the the sixth. Stimuli is the motion. Now, I love this chart because, and I think this does not apply only on marketing, but it applies on everything in life. That even if you, when you're talking to someone and you want to trigger an emotion, you know, we have a lot of different emotions, anger, happiness, disgust, and if you want to trigger an emotion, so what two emotions do you need to combine in order to produce a third one. Okay, so I'll just explain. So, right here. Hello, hello. Okay, where do I start from? Okay, so if you, if you combine acceptance hello. or trust with fear, what do you produce? You produce submission, you know? So, if, you, if, if I have to give you an example, you trust God and you fear Him, you know? Submission. Right? What else do we have? You combine joy and anticipation, you get optimism. This is exactly what we use in teasers. Anticipation, optimism, right? So, I, I think you just, uh, if you want to note this down, uh, I think this is just an amazing tool. Hello. Hello. How in your communication you can combine two different emotions and produce a third one, right? So, there must be, yeah. So, the good news is again, that if you combine all these six stimuli and use them in your marketing communication, there are high chances that you will be able to trigger the reptilian brain of your shopper or your consumer, which is actually responsible for all, all your buying decisions, you know. So, my part um, ends here, but there is just one last slide, and I think it's extremely important to address that as well. Uh, 
있으니까 Can we have a mic in the audience? So anybody would like to talk about this? I need more more answers. Anybody else? Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, she wants to see. Hello, hello. I believe it's unethical at every possible level because firstly, the consumer does not know about it. Secondly, we are selling them something that they probably do not want. Thirdly, we are manipulating their information. We are using that information without their consent <laughs> for our own profits. So yeah, it's unethical. Okay. So any uh, anybody else or should I just answer her question? Um, Okay, I think Hello. I should answer her first, okay, and then we, so we don't have any repetition in the questions. You know, so you have a lot of examples in the people's court. So A, it's never going to happen that we don't inform them. Most of the time, they're recruited shoppers. So we recruit them, and they are informed that you're being a part of the, this study, and then only we use these equipments. B, there is absolutely no way to manipulate them and get into buying something which they don't want. You know, I wish as a good tool, but as a good tool, you know. Um, so, saying that neuromarketing is unethical is exactly like saying that medical science is unethical because some people are actually uh, selling my kidney to a developed country, you know. So you have the skill set, you have the knowledge of medical science. Now you, you can use the same knowledge to sell kidneys, or you can use the same knowledge to save people's lives, right? So ethic, when it comes to ethics, so it's actually you who, who will be driving the ethical standards. And th your third point, that the data is what? Yeah. So again, it's, it's with their approval. It's with their approval. No, it's no, it's never without the consent. It's it's. Uh, it's uh, mm -hmm. But isn't that how research works? <laughs> you always select a sample size, and you and you know again again, you know. So a there is absolutely no way that you can manipulate people and get them to buy something. Uh, get them to buy something which they don't want, A, and B, uh, what was your second point? I'm sorry, I skipped. Yeah, so you know, as a marketer, I feel it's your responsibility to create better consumer experience, better shopper experience, and if this data can help you create better shopper experience, consumer experience, help them decide what they need to buy because they don't know. And B, reduce their cognitive dissonance behavior. I think as a marketer, you're doing a noble job. You know, if you can help your consumers, because right now, I don't see any marketer help actually guide your shoppers or your consumers to buy, to make them buy what they really need. No, no, but let me just mention yeah. this here that uh, Marketers these days are converting the needs in uh, wants into needs. For mm -hmm. example, Nestle wa bottled water. It was not there before. People were drinking water, and according to a lot of researches, I'm not going in, going mm -hmm. into the details, but you see, you're selling something that is a universal right. So that's what the marketers are doing, and it's unethical. Yeah. Again, I'm not defending marketers. You know, so again, Dr. Wali example. So it's the knowledge you get. Now you can use that knowledge to do something really bad or but you can do something see, to save lives. You, so as a marketer, our core responsibility is to create better consumer and shopper experiences. 
But if any marketer is not doing that, then he's a bad marketer. That's it. But you can't blame the marketing thing. fraternity. No, no, for no. It. I'm not at all yeah. blaming anyone here because I'm myself studying marketing. But the thing is that you can make people buy what they don't want and that's that's the power of marketing and you cannot just deny that you cannot let you cannot make someone buy that they do not need you mm. can do that and that's what that's how the industries are surviving yeah. and that's what our job is to sell something that they don't need and to create the need mm. see that's not the case every time again you can you, it's subjective like menstruation you know, it's a serious issue. And before advertising, there were no san hygienic sanitary pads. So, you know, so it was advertising who create education, awareness among the girls that why it's important to wear sanitary pads which are hygienic. And a lot of disease, same with, same with polio, you know, same with all the other diseases. You know, so again, you can't blame advertising for anything. But yes, if there are people who are manipulating, who are bad marketers, yeah, so there will always be good and bad people in every profession, you know. So, yeah, that answers your question.